In the previous video, we saved single records on the private database. In this video, we're going to use CK modify operation, which supports saving and deleting multiple records at a time. So I'm going to comment out where we're saving a single record to our private database. I'm going to go below that and let's create a new constant. Let's call this an operation. Operation is going to be equal to a CK modify records operation. And when we initialize it, there is an initializer that takes in an array of CK records to save and array of CK record IDs to delete. They're both optional, meaning that you can provide nil to either one of them and won't actually do that. So for our records to save, we are going to pass it an array of just our single record to note that if you wanted to add multiple records, you could do comma, another record. But since we only have a single record at this time, let's keep it as a record. Then our record IDs to delete, since we don't want to actually delete anything, let's pass it no. Once we have our operation uh, typed out, we need to actually configure it a little bit. So to configure a CK modify records operation, there is a configuration object, but let's create a new constant, calling it configuration, equal to CK operation configuration. When we initialize that, doesn't take in any parameters, perfect. There are two properties that we want to set on this configuration object, and they're both timeout properties. Dale, what is a timeout? Uh, an amount of time that we wait before we give up. Exactly. So let's do dot timeout, and let's give a timeout for the request. And let's give that, let's say, 10 seconds. There's another timeout operation property called timeout interval for resource. This is the separate timeout interval for if you're trying to push up a resource to your CloudKit compared to just a request. How do we know what the units are? It is a time interval. Time okay. interval is essentially a double, and that is represented in seconds. Sounds good. So now that we have our configuration object completely configured, let's pass that configuration object back to our operation. So operation dot configuration equals configuration. Now that we have it configured, the next step would be to actually set a modify, um, essentially completion handler. So let's access our operation dot modify records completion block. This is, can be treated as a completion handler essentially, that this closure that we're gonna give it will be executed after the records completion has occurred. So let's look at the type of this before we start typing is it of a closure that has an array of CK records, optional, an array of CK record IDs, optional, and an error, optional, and it returns void. So this is gonna equal, let's do a new closure, and we have three parameters. Records that were saved, record IDs that were deleted, and an error, and this is all in that closure. If an error occurs, that means your records were not saved or your records were not deleted, meaning both records and record IDs will be nil. If no error occurred and the save slash delete was actually successful, these objects would return both the saved objects for records and the IDs of the deleted objects in the respective arrays. I'm going to make one small change. Record, I, record IDs... Uh, how about deleted record ID? I like that better. And if we're gonna do that, let's change records to saved records. A little more clarity, reads a little bit better, and make sure we know what's actually going on. So just like up here in this save operation, this is occurring asynchronous, so we're not actually guaranteed to be on the main thread. So essentially, I'm just gonna copy this code that we did for our private database save record and paste this down in our operation. Uncomment it out, shift it over so make sure the tabbing's correct 
and let's walk through what we're actually doing one more time. Before I even do that, again, we have our self.navigation item backbar item is enabled, set to false. So before we actually try to save or delete anything, we're actually disabling the ability to go back to the previous view controller. Now, after our modify records completion block has been called, we're re-enabling that back bar button item so the user can actually go back. And if there is an error, we're printing out that error to the console, else we're printing out record was saved, and then we're going to pop our view controller off of the view stack to go to the previous view controller. But at this point, we're still not done because we have not actually added this operation to the database to actually execute it. To do that, we need access to the database that we want to call this operation on. In our case, this would be our private database. And it has, and it even is the very first thing that pops up, add operation. And we're simply going to pass our operation in. Once we do this, we can build and run our application. Click the plus button in the top right. And Dale, you just bought an iPad Pro, it says, in so our I, expenses. I now, I now want an iMac Pro. iMac Pro. Uh, 6,000. 6,000. And let's click Save. Notice how it says record was saved over in the console. So that means it was successful. And we can even prove that by going to the CloudKit dashboard. navigating to the container that was created for this project, clicking data in the development side, and querying for records. And notice instead of just one record, we now have two, and one is for an iMac Pro, the other is for the iPad Pro.